Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today let's talk step bits, or unibits, I guess as they're also known. Um, and I discovered that Irwin seems to be marketing a um, step bit. In fact, it's like this one here, um, that they call the unibit. So maybe they own the patent on the original design or something. You can see Irwin there. Uh, Irwin's uses one gigantic flute right down the middle. As you can see, there's only one, whereas most of the others are running two flutes. You can see this is a Klein here. Um, this is a Milwaukee. Now, a step bit basically is a whole bunch of steps, and each step is an ascending, let me show you on the Klein here, an ascending um, or enlarging um, of the cutting surface. So you start out with, you know, essentially like a pilot hole, and then it slowly goes bigger and bigger. Here it hits a 7 8 inch hole, a 1 and an eighth inch hole, a 3 8 or 1 and 3 8 inch hole here. There are small ones. You can see like on this. Uh, this is either a Stark or a, I think it's a Grand Rapids Forge, or yeah, Grand Rapids Forge maybe. It's an inexpensive one, and it's using a standard hex driver. But anyways, you look at this, you can see... Each step um, is one increment, in this case, of about a sixteenth of an inch, I think, or a thirty-second, it looks like. Well, yeah, it's all thirty seconds. Wow, not much. Um, real precise. Um, and then uh, here's another little bit bigger one. You can see the different steps in that design. Now, <clears throat> what these do is when you are uh, drilling with one, um, if it has the hole or it has a counter or a, uh, a sharp tip so you can actually start um, without a counter punch, um, you can actually start uh, pushing and it'll slowly um, grind through the first part. And you notice this is a little bit longer. Um, generally, on the, the first one, you actually hit, you punch it through, and then you get a feel for each of the steps. So you could figure out I need to go in five steps you know, to get to whatever size that is, you know, that I needed that half inch. So you'd go, you'd, you'd be pushing and you'd hear this clunk. That'd be one step, two steps, three steps, four steps. And then in the fifth, when you hit that one, you'd stop pushing because then that would be your half inch. Um, or you can, uh, you know, pull it out, stop it and check. These, um, like the Klein, actually have these indications, these spinning steel parts, which as you can see are marked for seven eighths, one and an eighth, and one and three eighths. So when that's spinning fast, you can actually see um, about where it is. So you have some kind of indexing in between. Now, I, I'm using this, showing you this on this uh, battery powered drill. Um, sometimes, if, depending what you're, you're trying to go into, um, if it's really hardened metal, you might need a, uh, excuse me, to get the cord out. Uh, the corded drill out, these just may not have enough, um, enough punch. Um, also, some people complain about the chucks um, that are just the hand tightened chucks that don't actually use a key anymore. Um, I've not had any trouble with, with holding these nice and snug, especially because a lot of them, like this Klein, is a six sided. Um, this Milwaukee has kind of like three big lobes, um, so it sticks into these chucks nice and tight, so you don't have to worry. Um, basically, when, by using one, <clears throat> one of these, you're able to drill into all kinds of different metal um, quite easily, as well as wood and plastic. And um, These things, uh, I, I first started using them like to drill into car frames to... to um, uh, add accessories like tow tow rat or tow um, hitches where the car wasn't designed for it or didn't have it. Um, you know, in order to put something like a bike rack on or a, a canoe support or something like that. Um, and these were just amazing. Um, you could really just drive right up in and put a pretty good sized hole for that. You know, three quarter inch bolt that needed to go through. To, you know, the frame. They're great. Way easier than stepping your way up to use like a. Um, a um, hole saw like this, or this is a Klein here, really beefy. Um, these are amazing. 
um, these kinds of hole saws, but or hole drill bits, excuse me, but they actually uh, um, just pale in comparison when you're using a nice big step bit like this. Um, there are some step bits that are designed to fit more into um, uh, the kind of these popular drills. This is a Milwaukee Surge here, um, or impacts. And then when you're using them, you can get an impact um, advantage, although these aren't rated for impacts. But I did notice that Milwaukee, and by the way, I've got a couple of Milwaukee's here um, that are, these are USA made Milwaukee's. Um, but anyway, they've got a new line of shockwave uh, step bits that are just incredible looking. I haven't used one yet. They're not inexpensive, but they're just beautiful. And instead of these, these, um, these lines, straight lines in the fluting, there's actually curve around. It's kind of beautiful. It reminds me of that, whatever that big building is in London. Um, but they're just, I want to try one. Um, and they're, they have uh, this kind of a shockwave mechanism um, I guess to take up the shock or transfer the shock or something. So um, I'm looking forward to giving some of those a try. Um, if you try to go with a kind of a standard drill bit, uh, most of the time in order to get anything large, especially, I mean, even up at seven eighths, um, this one's a half inch here. So, you know, that's what this thing's capable of doing quite easily um, right there. But you have to start reducing the shank in order to fit it into a lot of chucks. Um, and then as you reduce it down, you know, it starts to get to the point where it's a little absurd that you're driving such a big drill bit with such a small shank. Um, and also I think it's a little absurd sometimes if you went with a, if they made a large, um, uh, kind of a step bit like, or step drill bit like this that was still using this standard quarter inch hex, which really is not, not as strong as you might think. Um, and then of course, if you drill wood, you know, you might be used to uh, being able to use these gigantic paddles on these spade bits. Um, these do just fine. In fact, here's an example. I've got this inexpensive one on here. Um, and as you start drilling, I'll show you. Okay, there was the first one. Now, because it's a step, um, you only get the actual diameter for this distance right here, which is, you know, maybe a, um, I don't know if that's even a quarter of an inch, um, three sixteenths or something. But what happens is if you um, go to the next one just a little bit, you end up with a, a nice bevel. Um, but if you had a thicker piece of material, you can see, let's say this was half an inch thick, that I would be within several two or three steps. So if you needed something um, thick drilled, then you're, you probably should eat, unless it's the diameter of your drill bit, which, you know, if I needed a half inch, I could go all the way through to the end of this one. But if you've got a, if I wanted to do a half inch here and a half inch, you can see uh, is right here on this drill bit. If I go in half an inch, right there, if I have it, if it was deeper, you can see it wouldn't be the full diameter um, deeper in the material. So they do have limitations. And then to clean it out, I can also make nice beveling there. So makes you can use them for countersinking a little bit too. Um, but anyway, they're outstanding. They're wonderful. Um, so if you haven't used them, you know, get some and try them. Um, the Kleins, uh, I think this one was like 50 bucks at Home Depot. Um, got some smaller ones too. The Milwaukee's, I think these were like um, 30 something and their new ones are like uh, 50 and 70. So one this size and their new Shockwave is like 75 bucks. You can buy them in sets. Um, this was a three piece set. This one here. Um, and then uh, if you're using it, like if I was uh, you know under a, a vehicle frame. Um, it spits a lot of metal, of course, um, but without a huge amount of effort, I'm able to just drill a gigantic hole. And I remember one time having a trailer hitch installed at U-Haul on a vehicle um, because I didn't think I had the drill for it. And I watched them, you know, when they had this fancy drill that they wheel under and then just like, jack up and pop through the holes and or pop a hole in it. Um, I think 
um, when I was looking at it, I thought that went in really easy and it was using something like this and I thought I can do that. So, you know, as a DIYer, the next time I needed to drill into a car frame, picked up one of these, drilled right in. I do it in a heartbeat now, you know, I kind of with reckless abandon because these are so amazing. Um, even with a, you know, if you're using just a standard uh, Milwaukee drill because car frame material is pretty soft. Harder material, harder hardened steel, um, you're probably going to need a corded drill. Depends. And then you can also use um, a lubricant or a cooling agent with these as well. But these step drill bits are, are amazing. So, you know, don't don't hesitate and and that you can use them for all kinds of things. If you use them for plastics and stuff, they're great. Um, just go slow because they've got a, a heck of a bite to them. And with that, dock out.